Hello everybody, this is Fernando for the latest Cryptids of the Week video. Alright, let's go ahead and let's do another entry here, another random page entry based off of the cryptids.wikia.com website. As always, I just find a random page associated there and then I start talking about it here. In this case, when I saw the information, it instantly reminded me of those cheesy horror monster-like movies, the ones that would run around midnight, made in the early 1950s or so, just just low budget type stuff, but still so much fun to see and you'll and and you'll see why I was talking about this in a moment. And then also for a brief period, it looked like it was something straight out of a Godzilla movie, one of the older ones too. This was a creature that was only seen once, but still it had a pretty memorable appearance and a pretty memorable encounter based on how many people actually witnessed it. And it has to do with this, you're looking at it now. It's known as the, Gab the Cabagon, and I'll mention why uh, it pretty much only had one appearance afterward. So let's go ahead and let's talk about all the fascinating info associated with this very unique creature. And then at the end, I'll get my own thoughts, including some of the misinterpretations that this creature has been related to, which makes sense after you hear that information. So what was this Cabagon? Well, again, it was a creature that was found only once, and it was back on April 28th, 1974, to be specific. You have to go to the country of New Zealand. You have to go to a place called Littleton. And then there, there's a peninsula, a large body of water there that's surrounding that location. On that body of water, there's no doubt lots of boats out there. Some of them are recreational. But one of them that encountered this creature was one that was more on the fishing side. This was a fishing ship, in other words. It was known as the 28th Kompiramu Nihingo. I hope I'm saying that correctly, but yes, that was the ship that encountered this creature. And uh, this is like a picture of the type of ship, not exactly the ship itself, but still it's a close representation of it so that way you'll get a good idea essentially of, of, of what kind of ship ran into this creature. But yes, on that specific day, around 7 p.m. or so, there was a captain by the name of Captain Kimura, and there were also about 26 to 28 people on that boat. All of them, again, just there, just basically doing their jobs, trying to find and capture fish. So on that day at 7 p.m., they ran into this. This creature, this cabagon, is a literal translation. It means hippo monster. More on that too in a minute, again, when, I, when I'm talking about the misinterpretations. So this so-called hippo monster basically just surfaced upwards into the sea and then began uh, looking at them for a while. Who knows how much, how long it was, but apparently it was for a little while. And that's when suddenly one of the members saw the creature and then everyone else, of course, started looking at it as well. And the way it was described, it was as follows. This was something that was considered large I don't know if it was like too large but still because most of it was hidden within the bottom of the, uh, or in this case underneath the sea it's hard to gauge how truly massive this size of uh, the creature uh, uh, would have been but still what could be interpreted as the head the one that was extending above the body of water was estimated to be about one and a half meters in height overall it had a grayish color as well and then the head as you're looking at here seem to have these two large eyes and then what maybe could be nostrils right underneath it who knows though if those were truly nostrils or some other form of, of, of body part but whatever was the case it was there witnessing them the fishermen were looking back at this creature some of them eventually stated it could have resembled an ancient water spirit known as the Omibozo, who I've talked about in the past as well. So uh, some of the people that were there uh, who were familiar with that realm were, were, were thinking that this is what it could have been too. But either way though, this creature, it was just basically being observed and it wasn't doing anything harmful. And then eventually it just decided it dived back into the sea 
And that was it. That was the last witnessed account of this creature. The first and the last since then because uh, we're talking now over maybe three, four decades. And there hasn't been anything else reported either in that area or any other parts of of the local areas as well. Now, there have been this, though. Uh, once the creature was sighted and then, like, I guess, a little bit of talk and a little bit of buzz started to go around that location there was a local magazine there as well called the new zealand weekly magazine who knows if it started interviewing people that were surrounding that location but if they did they were able to report that there were these quote-unquote mysterious footprints that also came across the beach the nearby uh, beaches surrounding that peninsula so now you have this creature if it truly came on land it could not only swim into the sea but like a true mammal uh, it could also uh, a sea mammal it could also come onto land as well so who knows if somebody else there actually saw it in person other than the footprints if they have they haven't reported anything either to that weekly magazine or to anybody else. And that's why at least the counter in water remains the only physical one. But that seems to be the only other type of close related witnessed sighting of this creature, those footprints. But alas, there's no pictures associated with it. By the way, that captain I was mentioning earlier, he must have gotten a really good look at this creature in terms of, of how long it was staring at them and they were staring at it because he was able to sketch the creature um, as well. And after the uh, creature left, he was able to then just quickly do a sketch of it and then uh, keep it at least for some kind of records. But that's at least a brief info associated with the encounter. As far as the theories on what this creature is, there's the more real-world natural type theories. There's the idea, and I think this could be one along the lines as well, like this, I'm leaning more towards this, that it could be misinterpreted as either a walrus or one of those very large elephant seals. Uh, because here you have like a good representation of it uh, as far as the elephant seal. Very large creatures, uh, massive heads as well. Who knows if maybe it had some barnacles stuck under it, something else, or maybe it had a fight and um, it was losing, like it had small body parts that ripped out underneath its eyes um, because they're fiercely territorial. But whatever was the case, from far away, who are at least close enough to still get some details, this creature could have been misinterpreted as the uh, the Capagon. So in terms of this giant creature, these uh, these elephant seals, I think it tends to be more along that line. The only thing though is I haven't seen anything else as far as these seals being reported in that area somebody might you know if somebody wants to know if they can point me out in the right direction on that please post those comments below too so there's always that theory another one is it could be a descendant one of these creatures that was thought to have been extinct but somehow remained living out there in the waters and then was finally caught in terms of sightings uh, and that's what this cabagon was so it could have been the descendant of a creature known as the demostilidae i hope i'm saying that co that correctly to demostilidae which you're looking at a uh, uh, drawing of here it looks like it's just a larger hippo uh, that's why i was mentioning earlier uh the 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 way that this cabagon translate to is hippo monster. So maybe this creature, this Desmotilidae, could have been something that just lasted uh, because uh, since the time period of its extinction, um, this is something that it died basically around 13 and a half million years ago. But who knows, maybe there's a small family of them, something in terms of a small group still out there to this day. And that's what was cited on there too. There's finally, there's other theories as well that is just misinterpreted as yet other cryptids too. There's the bunyip that seems to be mentioned on this as well. I mentioned earlier the omibozu as another type cryptid too. And then finally some kind of sea cow sightings or giant mammals as well. Uh, large Atlantic sea ant mammals is another interpretation. So even though this creature just had a brief sighting, you've seen how many ways it could be misinterpreted already. Just based on what I've seen, I'm going towards the idea that it could be again um, something involving a large elephant seal that was misinterpreted. Um, but who knows? Uh, in terms of the world of cryptids, it's still out there when it comes to getting anything 
factual, like anything concrete for this. But what do you guys think in terms of this creature, this Cavagom? Anyone else happen to have any other information? Maybe something I might have missed. Anybody by that area too? Maybe that lives by that peninsula? Uh, if you've heard any more info on that too, uh, maybe from a more local standpoint, then please post those comments too. And didn't it remind you, everyone, of like one of those cheesy monster creatures that I was that I was just mentioning at the beginning of the video? Uh, if so, I mean that that's something that if if you love those movies too, like I did when I was growing up, then that's why uh, th it was really neat to talk about this creature here, and have it be as a random page entry too. So, all right, everybody, thanks again as always. Take care.